The Lord be with you. If you'd like to be seated. I'd like to say good evening and a very warm welcome to everybody on a very wet and cold evening to our first midweek Advent service. Uh, we want to also welcome those who are tuning in on the live stream, wherever you are, uh, you're very welcome as we come together on these three Thursdays in December, just as an opportunity to pause and to step back from the busyness and to focus our thoughts on Jesus. And tonight we're going to be thinking in particular about Bethlehem. And after our service tonight, everybody is warmly invited to an Advent supper over in the church hall. And that's being hosted by the Mother's Union. And thank you to them for hosting the supper this evening. As we come together to worship God, we're going to stand to sing our opening hymn. All the words will be on the screen, but if you prefer to use a red church hymn book, it's hymn 194, Earth Has Many a Noble City. service this evening is the service of a late evening office. If you're using the prayer book, it begins on page 162, and all the responses will be on the screen. Blessed be our God for all time, now and forevermore. Amen. Glory to you, our God. Glory be to you. Holy Spirit, Comforter, treasure of all goodness and giver of life. Come and dwell in us, cleanse us from all sin, and in your love bring us to salvation. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. And we're going to share together our evening psalm, which is Psalm 134. And we're going to join in the responses and we'll be omitting the Gloria at the end. Come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord. You have thy might stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands towards the holy place. And bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. The Lord who made heaven. And if you'd like to be seated for our Bible reading. (coughs) 
Our Bible reading this evening is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 2, and starting at verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of the Lord. Heavenly Father, whose Son, our Lord Jesus, was announced on that special, mysterious night over Bethlehem, would you be with us this evening, speak with us all this evening, and bring us your comfort. Amen. While shepherds watched their flocks by night, all seated on the ground, an angel of the Lord came down and glory shone around. Those words are so familiar, or as my mum used to say, she thought hysterically, as shepherds washed their socks by night. It's never quite as funny as she thought it was. These words are so familiar to us, and so are the images. We dress kids up annually in bedclothes and strips of cloth to mark this visitation that we read about tonight. And we probably all have an image in our head of even what the angels looked like and maybe even what they sounded like. This Advent, we're going to focus on that marvelous moment of history, that tremendous night, and recognize that it was all a part of a great plan. There is a time and a place for everything, and it was no accident that it was Bethlehem that was chosen for the focus of God's activity that day. Nor was it an accident that it was angels, those particular angels, bearing the news to shepherds. It was no accident that it was shepherds either. The words those angels spoke are also so important as they open up the wonderful truths of that moment to us. So this evening, let's look at the little town of Bethlehem, not as still as we may have thought it. Imagine an old family estate, a large building made of bricks carved from local stones, long tiled corridors lined with austere portraits, linen wallpapers and luxuriant cloths drape the walls and the windows. Imagine these rooms, once busy and bright, now dim and empty. The estate grounds are overgrown and full of briars, as if some wicked spell has been cast about them. The trailers and vines have breached the windows and walls, and now the beautiful corridors are filled with moss and rats and insects. The estate has passed from generation to generation, from heir to heir. Some of the inheritors were noble people, Some of them were thieves and smugglers and crooks. Now, though, as a consequence of warring between distant cousins, the old family estate, once such a grand place, now lies in ruins. 
The family, still heirs, are scattered and have neither the energy nor the means to restore the estate. As small as it was, Bethlehem punched above its weight in the hearts and minds of God's people. Like a family estate, it held so much of their history and potential in its heart. Over the generations, Bethlehem had been a home to great family heroes. Rachel, that matriarch, wife to Jacob himself, was buried in the outskirts of the town. As a part of the promised land, it had been given to the tribe of Zebulun and was the home of Naomi, mother-in-law to Ruth and Boaz, the noble and great grandparents of King David himself. David, that glorious and notorious hero, had been the king that finally unified the tribes of God's people and brought the, the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. Bethlehem was his town, his family seat. To be a citizen of that town was a proud thing indeed. Bethlehem also had a very grim history, with easily corruptible priests living within its gates, with one of its citizens being the victim of a most horrific assault and murder. The act upon that woman was recorded in the closing chapters of Judges, and it's a hard read, and I have to confess I skipped it on my last run through those books. There was something of great weight about Bethlehem, something special about it. As the prophet Micah himself had said, out of you, small town, will be a ruler of Israel. The family of God knew that out of this old estate, a promise was being kept. It was to be the birthplace of the Messiah himself. It's no accident that when the enemies of the people, such as the Philistines and Herod in their day, when they came, they set up garrisons just outside Bethlehem. The police in this country, the country you and I live in, know that if there's going to be trouble, it will happen at particular street corners at particular times. Likewise, the Philistines and subsequent invaders, right down to the Romans and beyond, were wary of the Bethlehemites, and rightly so. It was like a tinderbox. That's why it's so amazing that on that evening, the light of heaven, the glory of God, should be narrowed and focused down on this tinderbox. Everyone knows you keep fire away from such a thing for fear of the consequences. But God is and was unafraid. We, you and I, have our own Bethlehems. In this country, again, we have places that in their times have been difficult and dangerous. We ourselves have parts of our own lives that are raw or tender. There are parts of ourselves that we know are wounded and unhealed. Within ourselves, we know that we have pasts that are both noble and not. This Advent, we think of the messengers from God meeting shepherds in this volatile place without fear of any consequence. In the same way, God comes to us this Advent and invites us to look to him and then to ourselves. Those hurts we have, the anger we have, the hopes we have but dare not articulate, the things that are true of all of us but kept hidden, well, they are all known to God. We will focus more another time on the words of the angels, but we all know that the first word spoken to the shepherds that night was, do not be afraid. It is scary sometimes to be vulnerable to God. It's scary to say to God, our Lord, these are the things I fear the most. Meet me in my place of fear. Or these are the things that hurt me the most. Meet me in that place of hurt. So God begins with those words, don't be afraid. And then, with courage, God meets us in our secret and most vulnerable places. This little tinderbox of Bethlehem was not a still and quiet place. Picture perfect, as in our Christmas cards, it was like us. 
a great place of nobility and flawed and frail, but still full of promise. And it was where God met the world on that night. And it's here that we ask God will meet us this Advent. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you chose the most dangerous, the most unsettled place to meet your people as Christ came to earth. You chose a place that had risk and you chose a place that had vulnerabilities. Heavenly Father, we give to you our own places of risk, our places of vulnerability, our places of hurt and our places of caution. We bring them to you this Advent knowing that you tell us not to be afraid. You are the God who loves. You are the God who heals. And you are the God who gave his son to love us in a way that we can never imagine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let's continue in prayer for a few moments as we use our responses, which will be on the screen or on page 163 in the prayer book. Let us pray to the Lord with all our heart and with all our soul. Let us pray for all Christian people that they may live in love and truth. Let us pray for all ministers of the church and for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us pray tonight for peace throughout the world and for all governments. And let us pray for our neighbors and for all our friends. Let us pray too for those who hate us as we pray for those who love us. And as they're very much in the news at the present time, let us pray for refugees and prisoners and for all who are exposed to the dangers of travel. And as we bring to mind people known to us, let us pray for all sick people, for the sorrowful and the dying. Let us pray for the abundance of the fruits of the earth and that the poor and hungry may receive a just share. Let us remember our brothers and sisters who have entered into eternal rest. And as our thoughts tonight are focused on Bethlehem, that tinderbox into which God sent his son, let's pray this evening for Bethlehem and for Israel and Gaza in the land of our Saviour's birth, in all its turmoil and pain, let us pray in silence for that place. Lord, in your mercy, and in a quiet moment, let us bring to God those places of rawness and hurt, as well as our places of joy within us, as we bring them to him in our prayers in the quietness.
Lord, in your mercy. And a special collect prayer for this season. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And as our Savior Christ has taught us, so we pray together, Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we pray together our common collect. Lord Almighty, Lord Almighty, come and scatter the darkness of our hearts by the light of your presence, that we may know you, the light of the world, and the one true God, blessed this night and forevermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. May the Almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless us and keep us. Amen. We're going to join together to sing our closing hymn, hymn 118, Behold the Mountain of the Lord. <coughs>